Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about how to play the Astrologen for Final Fantasy XIV. This is WPGN, and uh, we're going to talk about both aspects that it carries, the buff cards and how to heal efficiently with it. So, uh, I had to cut a lot out of this video, so it's just going to be majorly uh, mob fights and boss fights. I cut out the running around, otherwise it would have been like a 25-30 minute video. Um, the dungeon that I chose is kind of long, so uh, we're going to start with a quick overview of some of the skills they get. I need to preface this with uh, the one I'm playing is not 70 yet, but it doesn't really change much. You get a couple damaging spells, Malefic and Combust. Combust is a damage over time. Um, your healing spells mainly consist of Benefect Helios, Benefect 2, Essential, <coughs> Essential Dignity, and so on and so forth. Um, your Aspected Benefect is your heal over time. Now you get two modes which you can heal in, or you can heal without it, but I don't recommend it. It is Diurnal Sect as well as Nocturnal Sect. Nocturnal Sect provides a shield for the healing received and Diurnal Sect is... it adds a uh, heal over time aspect to your abilities. Now what I see a lot is people, especially paying, playing this class, um, never mind the card aspect of it for now, but they will heal with their more expensive heal a lot and burn through a bunch of mana. That doesn't, I mean, that shouldn't be used unless your target that you're healing is 50% or below. Uh, you do get an immediate heal, which is that number two ability there, which I believe is Eternal Dignity. Um, and that's mainly used if they are 50 or below or you have to move a lot so whichever you know whichever fits that need for you um, it'll instantly heal there's no cast time um, it doesn't have a terribly long CD um, and it's not terribly expensive so it, it's a good thing to use uh, if you have it up but um, you want to, what you want to do to maintain heals or healing and not burn a bunch of mana is use your little cheap heal, the number one that I'm using there. Um, it doesn't heal for a ton, but it heals for enough to keep people up uh, in, until they take one of those big tank busting hits or they're just taking a lot of damage to the point that you need to use Benefect 2. So as you see as I'm going through these packs of mobs with the group that I was in, uh, I'm not expending a whole lot of mana you know I'm healing just fine and the other aspect are the buff cards now you can not use these um, you can heal just fine without them but the you know kind of neat thing about playing astrologen is you can buff up to two party members at a time uh, you'll get these cards and when you draw a card you know it'll come up with one thing or the other out of your cards now you have the option to store them as well for later use. A stored card will never go away. Uh, the third option that you have is to use the card that's drawn to trigger what's called the Royal Road, or I call it the River, but um, you know it's an association made with Texas Hold'em because you have two cards at all times that you can make use of. So whichever you use to trigger the river will have different effects, or sorry, Royal Road. So if you use, say, the spear or the arrow to trigger the Royal Road, and then you pull another arrow, or whatever buff, doesn't really matter, the bole, you or either or, uh, whatever, you know, whoever you cast that on will have a 200% time on you know, the, the time that it lasts, the buff time. Now, by default, all of the cards, whenever they're cast on either you or a party member, will last for 30 seconds. So, to, you know, increase that to a minute or longer is better. Now, you can only do that for one of the cards. Now, say you, you know, say you want to cast one, you know, cast the one that you drew on a party member, and then cast the one that you had stored 
on a party member. It will it will assign that 200% lifetime or whatever the buff may be on the Royal Road to the first person and the first card that you cast on someone. You know, see how I just did it there? That 200% disappeared and when I cast the Spire on the tank, he just got the normal, you know, the normal buff time. But it still allows you to cast two buffs on two party members at the time. Now, how to manage cards can be tricky. Um, so they give you all of these abilities that you can undraw, that you can redraw, and redraw actually comes in handy. Undraw does not. Emptying the, you know, emptying the river or the royal road does not come in handy. Uh, and let me tell you why. Every time that you do that, say you draw a card that you don't think is particularly useful. It's it's okay, but you know your party comp doesn't use it really. Uh, so you want to get rid of it. So you think, oh, well, I'll just undraw this and, you know, I'll be able to draw a new card. No. As soon as you undraw it, the skill goes on CD and you have to wait another 30 seconds to be able to draw another card. So it's better just to pick a party member that would use it the most. Whether it's a great benefit or whether it's a little benefit makes no difference. The fact of the matter is it's still a benefit. You're putting the skill on CD and somebody has a buff. If you undraw the card, no one gets it, and you still have to wait 30 seconds to draw another card. So you may as well just throw it on somebody that's going to get a little use out of it, then losing it altogether. Um, now, the only thing that I can say is, in the beginning of the dungeon, you know, you saw me draw and store cards. And that's, you know, whenever you have downtime and you're not doing anything, you want to cycle your cards. Why? Because it eats away at that 30 second cooldown before you can draw another card. So you do one at the beginning of the dungeon, you store it, or you activate the road with it, either one. Um, the road will not run out until you cast a card on someone. So you can let it sit there the entire dungeon if you wanted to. Or the stored card, you can let it sit there the entire dungeon if you wanted to. They never go away. Uh, so you want to get the road activated and you want to get a card stored as quickly as possible in each scenario that way you have them for later use and you're not sitting in the middle of a fight going oh god you know I should have drawn this earlier you know and now I can't do it and you know I got a party member that could really use it or I could really use it no just get it done as soon as possible cycle your cards throughout the dungeon doesn't matter how little use someone's going to get out of it you know, that way, during boss fights, he mine's empty here, just because I burned up a bunch of cards. But, I mean, he doesn't really do a whole lot anyway, so I've got more than enough time to fiddle around with my cards and, you know, decide who I'm going to give buffs to. And I always usually store the Ewer, if I can. Why? Because, you know, especially in this kind of dungeon where the last boss... There's a lot of AoE going on, there's a lot of stuff you gotta avoid, and people are gonna step in it. I mean, accidents happen, you know, so you burn up some more mana than you're used to, and, you know, it's like, oh, okay, you know, maybe the fight's a little rough, and you're getting down to slim pickings on mana. It's like, alright, well, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, use that Ewer that I stored, it'll regen my mana, and I won't have to worry about it. You know, as you notice, throughout this entire dungeon, I don't even come close to running out of mana. Um, yes, there are a couple of close calls where people almost die, but it's usually because they were out of range or <clears throat> or the boss had hit them with a really big ability and I'm in the process of, you know, my spell was already starting to cast and they get bumped back up. Um, you know, that's going to happen. That doesn't, you know, mean that you are a bad healer. It doesn't mean you're a slow healer. It just means that things happen and you have to, you know, you have to get on with it. Um, now, as you saw, I used that immediate heal on myself rather than another party member. People will argue, oh, well, you should have healed the party member first. And no, the rule is if you're a healer and you're dead, so is everyone else. If you are a tank, and you are dead. So is everyone else. Um, I don't want to poo-poo on the DPS because they are important too as they give you the damage to kill the mobs and the bosses in a significantly more reasonable amount of time. 
However, if a DPS plays dead for a few seconds until a healer reses them, you can you can get around that. You can work with it. If the healer's dead, no one else can res the healer. If the tank's dead, the only person that can res the tank is the healer. And if the mobs are running amok and they kill the healer off right after that, because that's what's going to happen, you, you, you're done. It's a wipe. So make sure that you are not in danger of dying as a healer. Uh, unless someone else's life force is critical and you are not in the middle of a bunch of stuff that you're going to have to heal yourself through, then by all means, drop that little immediate heal on them. But you got to watch out for number one in this case because you are supporting the entire party. <clears throat> Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, they're very easy healers to work with. They start out at, I believe, a little level 50 because they came in with Heaven's Ward. Uh, so you don't have to level them up through, you know, 1 to 30 to 50, you know, they start out at 50. Um, in my opinion, the reason that they become so desirable is because of the buff aspect. Along with the fact that they start at 50, you don't have to level them from the ground up. Um, and compared to, even if you go back to a dungeon that sinks you to a lower item level or a lower level, you still get, you know, the little short heal, the little cheap heal, and you still get Eternal Dignity, which is an insta-heal. So, over the other two healing classes, being a Scholar and White Mage, or Conjurer, as it, as it were, um, you get more healing ability than they do at their starting levels. So they're automatically more favored. Now, you don't get the cards at that time. But you have more of an ability to heal in the moment than, say, an Arcanist, or a Scholar, or a Conjurer, or White Mage. Uh, that and all of the healers do different things. Scholars can put a lot of shielding up. Uh, White Mages are the peer healers. They do a lot of nothing but healing, and they have big heals. And that's really, really good for raid-type scenarios. Uh, you can do it with dungeons, too. Uh, but I think... If we were to go on a point-for-point point system, the Astrologen, when going through dungeons, is probably a little more desirable because of the buff aspect. The more damage you do, the quicker things die. They have the ability to heal very quickly. They have the ability to heal multiple targets at the same time. Uh, that's one thing that I didn't mention. Is, is You see down there in my bar, those little two black faces that are facing each other. Uh, for... 20 or 30 seconds? It's one of the two. If you cast out on a person and then you heal another person with a single target spell, it heals the person you cast that on. So you can essentially heal two people at the same time, not to mention you get Helios and Aspected Helios, which is their AoE heals, and they all, you know, they both, when you're in Diurnal Sect, carry a heal over time on them. And they are quite expensive, uh, but there are situations in which you need to use them. Um, but other than that, it's a very interesting class to play, or job to play, with the card aspect. Uh, they're decent at healing, they're very quick at it. Um, and overall, it's just, it's just kind of fun to mess around with. Uh, so that's how I do it. You know, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you'd like to do. And I will see you all in another video.